welcome uh, prem uh, this is the next generation technologies uh, uh, event uh, organized by the ministry of education pandit madan mohan maliya national mission on teachers and teaching and led by ramanujam college uh, delhi university uh, along with the emerging open technology foundation as well as frost the uh, free open source software foundation frost we call it so what we have here uh, to the audience uh, which is all faculty this is a part of faculty development program so all the universities uh, research associates and uh, various faculty and students uh, are there mainly faculty so let me introduce you to uh, uh, prem shankar uh he is a leading technology strategist and speaker at various startups and advisory coach and author of intel soft is author too for various uh, blueprints and other uh, things he is from pondicherry and he has uh, and he is currently in the uh, bay area and then moved to uh, east coast to develop the 5g uh, for the 5g and 6g towards the uh, Uh, towards the uh, technology deployment and he is uh, an intel software innovator and he has been driving products for 5g enterprise cbrs oran and networks lightning etc around two decades of software uh, product engineering includes uh, product architecture delivery of multi cloud saas and networking domain currently vp engineering at cohere leading a team of uh, high tech staff building layer 2 layer 3 radio software to work with uh, rick radio intelligent controller 5g oran he has worked in similar areas in the past with lumina networks as product manager he is well known for his community leadership in akraino the odl as part of ericsson engagement he has developed great insight into building open source software and telco clouds welcome to uh, prem and it's your floor take over thank you prakash um good to meet you all um so as prakash mentioned um i've been part of the um whole 5g ecosystem um uh, since uh, 5g uh, started back at ericsson i was part of the open source as well as the sdn controller um and also i continued to build um, the know how around cloud native particularly uh, cloud native models for telco and uh, most recently um I have also got into the ORAN, uh, particularly focus on building X apps um, in the um, RAN intelligent controller, which plays a very important role in the uh, disaggregated 5G architecture. Right. Um, so, as part of my session today, uh, I'm going to give a quick um, overview about uh, one key component, which is the orchestration. Right. Um, the reason being, um, to put it in simple terms, 5G is all about RAN. transport and then the cloud right and uh, when we talk about new models particularly uh, new workloads uh, which is essentially the uh, ultra reliable low latency or the massive iot or the embb um, in order to realize the models the whole infrastructure has to be more composable right um, you would need to get the requirements from that of the business and then you should be able to uh, build the network or build the infrastructure on the fly right um so what is going to be important is the intelligence um that lies in the orchestration which can essentially understand what is the business needs or the intent and then it can create the infrastructure uh, based on the requirements right um so that's where um, i'm going to talk about um so the rest of uh, the session uh, i'm going to talk about a, a super blueprint uh, 5g um also talk about a bit about ona which is uh, open source orchestration um which is well adopted um, by few of the uh, telco giants and then um, also touch upon edge orchestration which is uh, again an important component because um, particularly to realize some of the models like urlc you do need to have network functions as well as the applications host near the edge um and um, um, i will summarize um, putting all of it together um, on how to realize a true 5g cloud native based network uh, architecture okay 
Um, so in this uh, slide, this slide uh, gives a complete ecosystem. Um, on to your um, left, you see user edge. That's where you have the uh, UE, which is the user equipment. Um, you have we call it as a smart edge because the edge has to be um, smart enough, um, be it from the intelligence to that of the data collection to that of providing or connectivity solution to varied um, devices. As you see, it's not just the mobile phone. It's about um, say AR, VR. It's about uh, automated car. It's about smart devices that has to be. Uh, brought into the network. So from that aspect, the user edge is a very, very important component, right? And uh, if you look at this particular um, user edge, you do have uh, some of this um, open source technologies, particularly on the edge uh, virtualization. And then you also have Fledge, um, as well as uh, Zephyr, uh, which talks about constraint device edge. They create the ecosystem. And then the next one is essentially the service provider edge, right? Um, this is uh, what I have been primarily focusing on. Um, particularly, I have been the uh, PTL for one of the project called uh, uh, Private 5 GLT, uh, which is under the Akraino project. And what we do here is uh, we tend to create um, all of this um, core, particularly the 5G core, um, based on um, cloud native technologies. And then we do have an orchestrator. Uh, which can essentially orchestrate um, the network functions and then they can host it um, on edge or depending upon the type of um, um, i would say the workloads that particular infrastructure need to support right um, so the edge stack um, is primarily um, you can say openness which is again uh, open source project from intel and then the Akraino, which is essentially a, a aggregator of many of the blueprints and one of the blueprint is about private 5G and LT. And moving on to that of the cloud and core, um, another important component is the Magma. I believe many of you would be familiar with the Facebook connectivity solution called Magma. And uh, in fact, Akraino blueprint, whatever I'm I was talking about, we uh, collaborated with Magma. Um, and from a cloud infrastructure perspective, um, I think this is quite um, self-explanatory. Um, onto the cloud infrastructure, you have some of the components, which is essentially about um, the data plane, acceleration, and um, again, containerization. And then um, from, a, again, touching upon the management orchestration, the global orchestration is primarily played by that of the ONAP. And um, of course, the infrastructure or the resource orchestration is uh, played out by multiple um, stacks, including Kubernetes and OpenStack. I believe most of you are familiar with this platform. And then from a networking perspective, it's SDN controller as well as the tungsten fabric, which essentially does the network orchestration. But to put it in uh, simple terms, that's the super uh, blueprint 5G, right? Now, let me uh, dive deep into what we do in uh, the private 5G LT, which is again with the uh, orchestration as a focus. This is a typical uh, private um, LT or uh, enterprise deployment, right? You have network core, and particularly in the US, uh, you do have uh, the uh, CBRS band, which is essentially accelerating the adoption of uh, uh, private 5G um, because it provides you the ability to uh, request for a spectrum. Uh, and this particular spectrum is primarily provided by what you call as a SaaS provider, uh, Google, Nokia, parallel wearers of some of the SaaS provider wherein you pay them like few cents and then you would get the, um, you will essentially get the spectrum based on your latitude, longitude. So we leverage that. And um, when we talk about um, a typical enterprise, um, you do have, um, you do have multi-site environment, right? Because what happens is a typical enterprise, when we talk about uh, uh, having to have um, different workloads, you would have different edges. That is where you're seeing it as a network edge. And um, that's where the UE lands, right? Uh, now, the building blocks for this is, of course, the Kubernetes, because we are talking about cloud native. And then the SD WAN in order to ensure you have connectivity with respect to that of the different network edges. And uh, on to the core, you have uh, you can have a EPC for the LT, 5G core for the 5G. Um, that's pretty much hosted on the, on the core, but 
when we talk about um, extending um, some of these uh, network functions, particularly we call it as the app placement, then you do need to have uh, UPF, um, sometimes UPF, SMF, as well as the AMF, they are all hosted at the edge in order to service certain applications that are um, latency sensitive, particularly URL type of applications, right? That is where on the network edge, um, this stack would essentially contain Kubernetes again, openness for the edge orchestration, then you have the CBRS that I was explaining. You have the UPF, then the edge apps is what is going to be mostly hosted on the edge. And then the SD even in order to connect, have connectivity to that of the core, right? So this is in a nutshell on how a typical uh, enterprise uh, 5G or an LTE network would look like based on our stack. Um, this is again the blueprint overview. This is just expanding what are the other uh, components. This is a different view, but to put it in uh, the orchestration perspective, you see the own app component that essentially would help you to host uh, the elements, the different uh, elements um, at the core as well as the edge. Um, moving on to the next slide. Um, uh, the next slide I would essentially talk about um, the ICN stack. Um, this is, if you look at it, uh, the hardware and the host operating system, they're well known, but um, you do have um, a bare metal provisioning via a combination of Metal 3 BPA controller as well as uh, KUD, right? That's essentially for uh, bringing up uh, any of um, the components right from the bare metal. And uh, there is another blueprint uh, which we leverage because that's the infrastructure um, blueprint. We call it as the integrated cloud native stack. This is again primarily driven by Intel. And um, they provide us all the needed components. And then the, um, the orange components, which is essentially the um, LT 5G RAM, the VEPC as well as the 5G, then the application function integration as well as the UPS. Those are the components that we primarily focus on. And that is being brought as part of the orchestration. Right? Um, so, that's that's a simple uh, nutshell. Moving on, we looked at ONAP as a global orchestrator. You saw that it needs to work on a multi-site environment, but it's also critical that you need to look at um, the uh, local orchestration uh, wherein it can be an application orchestration, right? What is meant by application orchestration is cloud native is all about not just um, defining a microservice architecture, it is also about depending upon the environment, you are indeed looking to compose your applications based on the requirement, right? So that is where in this diagram, you see microservices being distributed across. So in this case, we piggyback on the ENCO. There is a, again, this is part of the openness, which essentially helps us to drive the uh, geo-distributed edge applications, wherein you define the recipe on what you want, and depending upon the driving factors, which is essentially the constraints rather to say, it can be about latency, it can be about bandwidth, it can be about proximity or affinity, it can be about privacy, right? So these are being defined as recipes and depending upon the recipe, the orchestrator instantiates the applications uh, along with the network function at the edge side in order to meet the um, use cases uh, requirement, right? When I say use case requirement, it can be a use case of an AR, VR, right? Or it can be like a remote debug. Or in this example, you see a smart city application, right? So now, depending upon what is that you want, the uh, orchestration takes in this input and then instantiates those components that are needed in, onto the edge sites and then um, brings up all of these components into it, right? So um, that's in a summary about um, what we do as part of this particular Acrino blueprint, um, as well as uh, how um, orchestration plays a very important uh, role in 5G. Um, so these are some of the references which ca you can use as part of um, your research if need be. And uh, if you have any questions, you can always reach out to me. Um, yeah, so that's what I wanted to talk about in a nutshell, okay. Yeah. Um... So one question you can answer uh, uh, for uh, us. Did you record? Uh, okay, is it recorded? Yeah. Everything, everything is recorded. Uh, yeah.
So what I want to do at this time, uh, Prem, just uh, before you leave, uh, one or two questions. One, uh, how do we reach you? And uh, what area uh, you can guide people specifically related to uh, the 5G and CC areas which you have discussed? Sure. So in fact, uh, one area um, you can reach out to me is around the uh, network functions, uh, cloud native network functions. Um, I can in fact uh, send across to you some of the earlier talks that I've been uh, giving around this particular area. I've done a lot of workshops uh, along with Intel. That would be uh, fantastic because I can add to the references. You go yeah. ahead and send me those links. And, I'll and then um, I can reach, I can be reached. I mean, reach out via uh, my Gmail, uh, Premsankar, P R E M S A N K A R at gmail.com. I'll again share it with you, Prakash. Uh, yeah, go ahead. I'll, what I'll do is I'll put it in the QA, your link uh, in the uh, slide so that people can use it. Sure, and, definitely. Hey, I think we should end. You have, I know, to go for the next one. So thank you very much for taking a short time, but uh, at least covering everything. In case we have missed anything, we'll come back to you. But I'm pretty sure that this gives a, a beginning for everybody who wants to uh, dwell in the uh, private 5G as well as on the MCO and the openness, uh, some of the projects which you have mentioned uh, in the context of use in India. And uh, look forward to again working with you whenever best we can get it. But Thanks for, this is the last session, uh, session uh, one of 15th day of the uh, Pandit Madan Mohan Mahalia uh, National Mission on Teachers and Training. Uh, and thank you very much for uh, providing your valuable time and we look forward to working with you in future. Thank you very much. Thank you.